Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on the Opel Mariva A. The Mariva belongs to the generation of Opel cars in which corrosion resistance has received the utmost attention. This is not to say that the workmanship is outstanding, but surface corrosion of doors, fenders and arches is found mainly on the oldest and unkempt basements and in places of strong sandblasting. And the basis of the structure is generally held up well. The internal parts and thresholds are very well protected. But unfortunately, point defects in the paintwork are characteristic of this car. Many cars have minor bugs on the surface that seems to be not exposed to stone hits. Rear door corrosion is rare. While chips on the hood and windshield frame are con consequences of a layout and aerodynamics. It is interesting that chips on the frame usually do not rust for a long time, but the hood loses its appearance quickly. Not all elements of galvanized steel are made in opal. In general, paintwork defects should be monitored and immediately eliminated, but this doesn't cause much trouble. But the plastic parts are surprisingly strong, even in winter jams are usually straightened out, and in summer bumpers generally break only after serious blows. The plastic is very good, and the paint on it adheres perfectly. It is a pity that the optics and windshield are prone to rubbing, although this is again the fault of aerodynamics, not the quality of performance. The interior of the car is simple, but really well done. High-quality materials, fitting, plastic, buttons and levers are more typical for cars a class higher. Of course, it's a bit narrow here, but there is enough space even for very tall passengers. Most of all, the age of the car gives out the condition of the flooring and control buttons for the air conditioner. If the steering wheel trim is made of leather, then it may also look unprepossessing already in the fifth year of life, like the gear level. But the rest of the interior, including the seats, is doing well. In extreme cases, you can do a light dry cleaning and everything will sparkle. There are practically no serious problems and even the onboard computer displays doesn't suffer from dropping pixels. The central lockings work perfectly, the multimedia control from the steering wheel doesn't fail, the climate works. Rarely come across cars that, at the age of 10, cause no more trouble than new and Mariva is the very rare case. Serious complaints are only caused by the engine management system and the wiring of the engine compartment. The later looks very solid, but in fact it turns out that the installation becomes fragile by 8 to 10 years of service. The company Siemens, which supplies electronics, clearly saved on it. The engine ECU is also not done in the most successful way. Not often, but it still fails due to overheating and vibration. Tears off the wires that connect the chip crystal on the ceramic board and the pins. The most unpleasant consequences are wandering holes or complete failure of the unit. The cost of solving the problem is quite high, and if you have already encountered it, you need either a used block, correctly untied, or repair of an old one, which is performed by a few specialists in this field. Ordering a new ECU is also possible, but the price of the unit is now about 85,000 rubles and hardly anyone will go for it, having alternative options. Basically, the problem concerns 16 valve gasoline engines, 1.4 liters per 100 horsepower Z16XE and early versions of the 1.4 liter engine Z14XEP. The newer 105 horsepower Z16XP is practically devoid of this problem as well as 1.4 after 2006. Of course, there are minor problems, but they are random in nature. Cases with the violation of the wiring of doors and inferior are most often associated with unsuccessful body repairs. It is also almost hassle-free of Mariva. The suspension is simple and easily covers 100 to 1500 km if you do not abuse primers and full load. In the front, the stabilizer struts and bushings are the first to fail, as well as the rim arm silent block. All other elements can pass 200,000 km on our roads, and in Europe they hardly break at all. At the back, the first to surrender are not the silent beams, they are demonstratively reliable, but the lower shock absorber bushings giving themselves away with a very unpleasant knock. The steering here can be either without an amplifier at all, since the mass of the car allows it, or with an electric ZF amplifier. It is arranged approximately as on Kalina and Grants. The motor is mounted on the shaft. This is not to say that it's perfect, since many people complain about insufficient power when parking, but it rarely breaks down, and most often its wiring causes problems. This is important, since the price of the electric motor itself is more than 100,000 rubles, but the rail can knock already with a run of 50,000, but this knock is completely safe. It doesn't wedge and it doesn't flow. The main thing is to monitor the integrity of the anthers and the condition of the steering rods. They serve 60-90,000 km each, and they are often forgotten about. By the way, on cars without an amplifier, the steering column is often loosened, because drivers do not often follow the rule to not turn the steering wheel in place. The braking system is not a hassle, although the steel pipes on the oldest cars often already corrode a little, the plastic coating peels off from them. 
Moreover, the rear calipers are prone to edification if used with worn pads. Packing brake cables traditionally freeze for awful in winter after 3 to 5 years of operation, it is recommended to spill ATF regularly. Anyone can invite the resource of brake pads and discs. Cars with native front brake discs and a mileage of 200,000 are not at all uncommon, and the resource of the pads can be 16 and 100,000 km with careful handling of the brake pedal. This is what high quality and low weight mean. I would like to say that there are no problems here either, but unfortunately this is not the case. The resource of the clutch, hydraulic release and flywheel is more than sufficient, not less than hundreds of thousands of kilometers with proper operation. But the manual transmission itself of the F13, F17 series and gasoline engines 1.4, 1.6 sometimes fails. The reason is in its design, plastic casings of the secondary shaft roller bearings, weak housing, leaking oil seals and god knows what else. It is recommended to check the oil level regularly and change it occasionally. If there are chips on the magnet of the measuring hole plug, then everything is bad. The box is definitely going to be repaired. Before buying, check the car on the lift. Start the engine and spin the wheels to 100-120 km per hour and then turn off the engine. A hum from the box will indicate a problem. Fortunately, with engines 1.4 and 1.6, the problem is very rare and this is mainly consequences of some nuances of operation. But with 1.8, and on a heavier cars, the chances of encountering this disaster are great. The price of a manual transmission bulkhead is now more than 50,000 rubles and a new box cost under 300,000. With the turbo engine on the OPC version, there is manual transmission of the M32 series. It is noticeably more reliable, but also not at all eternal. But diesel engines are equipped with the 5-speed F23, which practically doesn't have such problems, despite the higher load. Isotronic is a robot based on the F-17 manual transmission and in addition to all its mechanical problems it also brings troubles with drivers with drives and frankly can unsuccessful operating algorithms. If you have already rode Vesta with AMT and thought that the Germans are definitely not worse, then you are mistaken. This is not to say that such a transmission option is absolutely unviable. On a light car and on country roads, it behaves quite acceptable, but the regular visit to the official service will be required to adapt the set point using the dealer's tech to scanner. Simple software solutions do not work, and even if the drivers break down, the new one will cost a fortune. By the standards of the class, from 60,000 rubles, and you still need to look for a craftsman to fix it. Russian versions of the car are mainly equipped with gasoline engines. All motors are close relatives from the old good series of Opel engines to trace their ancestry back to the 90s. Motors on Mariva, for the most part, are already devoid of the problems of the progenitor with an unsuccessful piston group and a weak cylinder head. Only the earliest versions of the Z16XE can consume all. The rest are distinguished by a consistently high resource, reliable timing belt and many small problems at the age of 6 to 8 years. Weak wiring in the engine compartment, which leads to small and unpleasant glitches. The crankcase ventilation system is very simple here and each motors are prone to sweating due to clogging of the old separator and the hole in the throttle. The twin port dampers inside the intake manifold also often knock. Here you can change the manifold, but it will be much cheaper to fix it. The ignition module is not reliable, especially if the plugs are rarely changed. The serviceability of the mechanical part of the engines is somewhat leveled out by not the most successful solutions in the control system. But all the components are inexpensive and everything is perfectly diagnosed. The main thing is to check all system in time and change the oil at least once every 10,000 km. Bezel engines 1.3 and 1.7 are presented in different power options. 1.3 has a chain in the camshaft drive. 1.7 has a belt, but in fact the motors are very similar. As well as their fuel equipment and its problems. Relatively weak injectors are noted, the resource of which is often less than 100,000 km on Russian fuel and the same weak AGR valve. Also, the intake pipes of the engine are not optimally located. The tightness is often broken and as a result the motors do not give out full power. There are no problems with turbines. In general, diesel engines are quite successful, but their operation outside large cities can be short. By the way, watch the intake manifold. Even if the EGR is working correctly, but the car is used for short trips, an airy amount of soot accumulates there, often a layer of several centimeters. On this information about the problems of the Opel Mariva A is exhausted. If you know more or do not agree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments.